My soul needs this bike ride. Today is going to be a terrific day. It's a beautiful day for a bike ride. I just got off a 48 hour shift and I'm super stoked to bring you guys the ride and review of my final build of the Mongoose Ledge X1. So to start with, huge shout out to the shed, also known as Chris, because it is him and his wife's anniversary this weekend. I believe it is 27 years of marriage, so a huge congrats there, Chris. Uh, your daughter reached out to me, actually, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So let's talk about this Mongoose Ledge X1. The biggest burning question that I would tell anybody over this bike is, who is this bike for? This bike is for two people, in my opinion. There might be a subcategory. People like me who just like to do budget bike builds. I just have fun doing that, so that is why I bought it. I bought it for my personal use. I bought it just to see what I could turn it into and what I could do with it. The second person that this is for is kind of a, a weird category of two people. It's either beginners who don't have a lot of actual trail experience or for people who don't have a lot of money. This is a $400 bicycle. Is it perfect? No. Is it a great platform? In my opinion, yes. You can see the different upgrades that I've already done to this bike. And I'll go over all that here in just a second. But for the price of this bike and what you get bang for buck wise, I don't know if there's another bike that beats it. At the end of the day though, for this bike specifically, you need to ask yourself, how much can you afford personally? How much is in your wallet? Do you only have $400? go for this if you have 500 look into the x2 for the upgrades that i was doing the actual x2 didn't have anything more than what this had to offer the frames are the exact same dimensions the actual bike comes with 29ers but with this bike being the exact same dimensions as the actual x2 i could put 29ers if i wanted to and i actually did that video and was able to fit 29 by 2.6s on this frame the 2.6s were a little tight. I think 2.4s would be much better on a stock actual X1. But to start with, as you can see, this is a mullet now. So I have a Nuke Proof Horizon 27.5 rear wheel. Uh, definitely not a necessary upgrade in the sense of price. It was a little over $300 for this rim, but I did get it for the actual engagement and I just wanted to try one of these so I threw that on there, okay? So we're starting with the expensive stuff that I don't really recommend you do. Uh, you could get a way different wheel for much cheaper, around $100 to $150 off of Amazon, anything like that, to get the Shimano styled or Hyperglide, also known as HG, cassette so you could fit that on there and upgrade it because the stock on the X1 is not bad. It is not an HG style, it's a free wheel. So upgrading that is pretty well a nightmare. Uh, went with Trail Kings front front and rear, and they both are the, uh, the Trail Kings. So 29 up front though, so that's what a mullet is. It's business in the front, party in the back. It's got 29 are up front, it's got a 27.5 in the rear. What that does is raises the bottom bracket just a little bit and also slackens it out just a little bit more. Never ridden a mullet before, so I wanted to turn this into a mullet. So far, absolutely loving it. This front fork is my X-Fusion. It is a RC32. It is a boost up front. So just a heads up on that, it is a boost through axle. So it's not a quick release. Uh, I actually found this wheel set, uh, a front and rear wheel set, off of, I believe it was eBay for $160. Brand new takeoffs of a giant bicycle, uh, tubeless ready. I believe the diameter of the rim is 32 millimeters. I think that's what it is. But uh, I, it was, I can't believe I found that wheel set for the price. So that's also something to know about this rear wheel. If you keep your eyes open and check like Facebook Marketplace and that kind of stuff, you could very easily find good deals. So keep an eye out and make sure you're looking for that if you're buying this bike to upgrade. Went with Dayor crank set for the front. It's got a Dayor 
bottom bracket. I believe it's in, yeah, you can see it, MT800. Hopefully you can see that okay. Uh, I just really like the Dayor for the price. I just think it's a, it's a great crank set, just a little nicer quality than the IXF crank set. Now, if that's all you can afford, definitely slap an IXF crank set on this. It does come stock with a one by, so that's not necessarily an upgrade I'd recommend right away. Found this really cool oil slick chain on Amazon. It's about $35. Uh, so far, it's been actually performing terrific. Advent X, you can see a couple scuffs there. I've had a couple rides on it already. Uh, this is my third Advent X group set. It is a clutch. You can hear the ratchet. It's very, very cool. But also, you can see that a little bit there. Uh, that is the quick link for the actual chain off Amazon. So the chain with the quick link is always great. Race face chesters, tried true, just great pedals. Uh, I loved the orange. Uh, I did have cheaper pedals, but the oranges didn't match everything else. So that's why I went with race face, just a better orange to go with the color. Uh, went with some fancy orange cables to go through it's for the uh, accent colors. Went with the Crank Brothers dropper post. Now this is one of the weird things in my opinion over the bike, 27.2. It is what it is. That's the diameter of the dropper post that you need. Uh, I would love to put a 150 millimeter dropper in this. 125 is the biggest I could find uh, in 27.2 diameter. Is what it is. It's, it's a bummer. 27.2 just is not as, I mean, on a little bit more pricey bikes, it's usually 30, then 30.6, 31.6. Uh, Some are actually up to 34 now, I believe even, so. But, this is not the typical diameter for dropper posts or for seat posts nowadays. So it's more of a specialty item in the sense of dropper posts. So only 125 millimeters is what it is. SDG saddle. Uh, some people may really, really like the saddle that comes with the actual bike stock. I just really like SDGs and Ergon saddles. So I upgraded that for myself, 100% personal. Went with a Spank handlebar set. It's got 40 millimeters of upright uh, up sweep. So, yeah, again, just preference there. PNW grips just to tie in with the orange. I think it looks great. Some wolf tooth spacers, went with a risk headset. And of course, the fork is tapered as well. I don't believe I shared that. Uh, as usual, chicken Cindy's logo up the front there. And I actually went with some Shimano brakes. Uh, I love Shimano. I think they're great brakes, hard to beat. And the rotor is 180 up front, 160 in the rear. I believe that's everything. If there's something that I potentially missed, let me know, put it in the comments and I'll let you know what I did or did not do to this bike. But let's go ahead and get to some trail footage and we'll get some afterthoughts after the actual ride. All right, so today I'm gonna do the green loop. It's like a little beginning extension to this, but I never really throw this part on camera. So I figured today would be a great day to get it recorded on this mongoose ledge. I also forgot to go over, I do have a DNM rear shock. I got a wolf tooth dropper for my Crank Brothers dropper post. And those are some things there where you can save some money on if you want to. Uh, I typically run PNW dropper posts. I love PNW, but the one I wanted for this one was out of stock. So I just went with the Crank Brothers to try it. That works, no problem. It's a dropper post. It does what it's supposed to do, right? <laughs> but. I really like this part of the trail. It's kind of a good starter. It's pretty up and down. It's got some real fun flowy downs. Some real decent climbs. If you don't know it though, the climbs will get you. Here's where I bring all my bikes to review. It's the Sister City Trails in Charleston, Illinois. They're really nice. They do a good job keeping them groomed. But yeah, if you uh, know the trail, you can get repaired for stuff like that. A little climb right there, because what happens is, if you don't know it, you get going fast on that little downhill, and you're in a rough gear <laughs> to be able to make it up the hill.
What a beautiful day to be out here on the trails. Holy cow. It's gorgeous out. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna put two little videos up showing the weight of the Mongoose Ledge X1. Stock weight was like 39 pounds. She's a hefty girl. But after upgrades, I think I got it down about six or seven pounds. The second video I'm gonna post is actually of my Vitus Mythique. And the Vitus actually weighs a little bit more than the Mongoose. <laughs> so the Vitus is quite a bit more expensive than what I have in this. So you can get this down pretty good weight wise. Because some of you might see that weight and be a little worried about it. And it's really not as bad as people make it out the sound. But you will have to put a little money into it to get it down in weight. If you're just a beginner, I wouldn't worry about the weight. It'll just make you a better rider. <laughs> and then whenever you do start doing upgrades down the road, some of those climbs and stuff will be easier. <laughs> so that green trail pops you straight out of this little red trail again. That's like the beginning trail. And this is what I typically have in all my videos. As it's fast and flowy. And it's fun. What a beautiful day. Oh golly. I think I've said it a couple times now. This thing flies. Man. This thing feels good. A little bit of squeakage on the rear brake, but it is what it is. Woo! She's doing great so far, holy cow. That was fun. Now we gotta go around wonderful Lake Charleston and we'll pop back out over there we get to a little bit more of the actual trail footage so getting ready to get into the gravel portion i'm thinking so i run fidlock water bottles they're magnetic so i just buy the adapters and just switch my water bottles out i did a video a short complaining about the amount of room in that front triangle to fit water bottles this bottle is 450 milliliters the typical bottle i'd run with is 600 this one fits no problem so about a 450 milliliter, uh, milliliter water bottle is about what you can fit without it hitting your rear shock. So, fun fact. So this little part of the trail is super fun. It goes down this steep gravel over this dam and then it goes back into dirt trail. But there's this little climb right here. And this climb, I've never shown. But it's one of those things, again, where, like, if you're not, or if you're, like, new to the trail or don't know what it is, it'll get you. But I'll tell you what, this, this bike climbs real well. And that's actually what gets you to this road climb. Which... You guys have seen this quite a bit, so let's go to the top and I'll tell you how we did. Made it to the top of the road climb. Honestly did great. My body's really disagreeing right now though. So we had a pretty good call yesterday. So my body's a little my body's a little unhappy. But we need to get out and do this. So this is the part of the trail I always like to remind people where I clipped my pedal and went flying on the dolomite. It's got this like slight, 
kind of downhill feeling where it just rolls real nice. Flow's pretty good. You can still pedal if you want to get a little bit more speed. And now here's the fun fruity climb. Oh gosh, dang it. <laughs> Oops. All right. Let's redo that. That tree came out of nowhere. I think it's important to show the mistakes. We're human. None of us are perfect, right? <laughs> That's what we were shooting for. <laughs> As usual, the Advent X is shifting and performing terrific. If you're looking for a budget friendly group set, that's it, gosh. Dayor's good too, but it's just a little more expensive. So I go with micro shift. showing you guys the right here so let's go right this is the top of that little road climb so if i go right instead of left that's how you get to this little trail that i was just doing the other way but i like going to the top and riding that but this part still is very fun <laughs> that room got my tire a little bit. Yeah, this way's just a little bit more flowy. You get going a little bit quicker. It rained a couple days ago. So the trails feel really good. It was just enough to knock the dust down. The suspension feels great, of course. If you get air suspension, make sure you dial in the sag and everything. That little downhill section pops you out right there to the left. And then I usually turn left here instead of going right like I just did. Almost like a trail tutorial trail tutorial and a bike ride. All right, we're coming into the little jumps. dusty up there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Had a little burn out there. <laughs> I'm gonna try that again since I about burnt out on that corner. <laughs> well I think it's just a little bit slower around that corner. A little bit better. <laughs> I feel better. Woo. Much better. Okay, this little part of the trail is really fun. 
it's a good confidence builder because it's so wide. It's pretty well all downhill. Of course, I had to climb up this and got to keep an eye out for people. And this is also a walking path, so keep your head up. This takes us straight into the big climb here. <laughs> that is so fun. Alrighty, here we go boys. And girls. <laughs> Alright. Standing already, which I'll change my gears after this. So that was my bad. Should have paid more attention to my gears there. The first little part is, it's not terrible. This part is the hard part. It's super steep right there. And it mellows out again. A little downhill. Whee! <laughs> The biggest thing is about climbing is make sure your saddle's the right height. Keep your butt planted and your weight over the front. It's almost like an attack pose. That was a spider web. My legs are feeling it. Good golly. Knock it down a gear. Woo! Climb's good. Still trying to get used to that mullet. <laughs> Man, that one knocks it out of you. I did 6.3 miles. I'll put my Strava right here so you can see exactly what I did on that ride. Nice little ride, wasn't too bad. About 40 minutes, kept me busy. I did some of the things I wanted to do on it. <laughs> Performed great. Uh, like I said, I've had a few rides now on this bicycle, uh, fully upgraded. So this isn't my actual like first ride technically with the fully upgraded. I am, I'm honestly pretty impressed with this bike. Uh, it did a great job. It does a great job. Uh, the geometry honestly is about perfect compared to like nice newer bikes. Geometry is about spot on with most of the newer bikes. I mean, there's not much to complain about it there. Uh, stock, it does leave some stuff wanting. Uh, drivetrain stock's not bad. Honestly, I wouldn't even touch the drivetrain originally. I would just, I would ride that until it broke or it needed replaced. And then that's when I'd look into a rear wheel and a new hubs, uh, a new uh, group set and that kind of a thing. Brakes, if you get them dialed in stock, they're not bad either. I mean, hydraulic brakes are nice. They're not a necessity by any means. So that is something to keep in mind. Handlebars, stem, pedals, grips, all that stuff. All your contact points are some of the first things I always recommend to upgrade, uh, just because they're so personal. So if there's something you do want to upgrade at first, that's where I'd start. Uh, honestly, suspension, in my opinion, is what's going to make this the best bike it can be. Uh, cheap, you know, potentially looking at Suntour Epixons, Manitou Markors. If you can find an X Fusion used, that's a great deal. Uh, two to three hundred dollars. Everything fluctuates right now, so it just depends. So those are some uh, front shocks I'd highly recommend. Fox actually makes a 165 rear shock, but it's like three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, this DNM is a hundred and ten dollars. It's got rebound adjust. It has a lockout for a hundred and ten dollars. In my opinion, it's really hard to beat this one. It's 165 millimeters, uh, eye to eye, that is. And honestly, for being an air rear shock, it's terrific. Do keep in mind, if you do go air rear shock like this DNM, you will have to buy an actual shock pump. They're about $30, give or take. So that's another item to keep in mind. But switching this rear shock out, super easy. I'll post the video I did real quick. Take the two bolts out, put the new ones in, uh, take out the spacers and things. but. Very, very simple to do. And that's honestly one of the first upgrades I would do is a rear shock upgrade or a front fork upgrade. 
Uh, this bike stock really doesn't do bad at all. Uh, this bike upgraded is pretty impressive. Uh, as mentioned, the rear wheel is probably the only thing that I splurged on in the sense of spending a lot of money. Uh, everything else isn't bad at all. Uh, a dropper post is something I'd hugely recommend at first just because it's dropper post ready. I mean, it's got the internal routing, so that's terrific. And honestly, a dropper post is just going to help you if you use it appropriately. If you're climbing, have it up. If you're pedaling, have it up. Uh, when you're going downhill and things like that, that's when you want it down. So a dropper post is kind of a acquired taste to some. I love dropper posts. And if I could put a dropper post on a bike, I absolutely will. If it's a trail bike, you know, dirt jumpers and things like that, you don't really want a dropper post on. You just pretty well slam the seat. <laughs> but uh, like I said, uh, if there's anything on this that you wanted me to go over that I haven't gone over or that I missed, please put it in the comments so I can get to you. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing to Chicken Cindy's. I'd love to have you guys as subscribers. And if you just have anything that you'd like to see me still do to this or do different, let me know. I just want to keep doing things with this Mongoose Ledge X1. Uh, I have it pretty well done to where I want it, and I'm very impressed with it. I think it's terrific. It rides great. But again, I mean, this style bicycle is not for everyone, and that's absolutely fine. If you can afford a nice Vitus Mythique or something like that, do that you absolutely should but i mean if this is what your wallet can afford this is a great platform to start on so i mean this is this is what you can do to it you can make it a pretty mean trail machine so it's the mean trail machine guys thank you so much and everybody take care